Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post here at our Concord, North Carolina studios. From the Lethal Chassis Studios in Pennsylvania, it's Ashley Stremme. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Well, I am not good, Steve. The fair is over and my diet has started. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair week. Juniati County Fair Week. And, folks, if you don't know what that is, just go to the Wing Nation Twitter page or my Twitter page because everybody on the planet sent me pictures of food this year. Dirty <laughs> rascals. I from doing so. Oh, my God. You were the only one that refrained. <laughs> Everybody else did. I saw more Lutheran church stand pictures this year than I've ever seen in my life. I saw Rico Abreu at the Ruth Lutheran church. I saw Brian Brown at the, I mean, my gosh, I am telling you what. Yeah, the, if I was in the diet industry, I would set up shop this week in Port Royal, Pennsylvania, because you would have a whole bunch of, that'd be like New Year's. That'd be, that'd be like the New Year's resolution. Man, oh man. It's true. What a, <laughs> what a great time and what a great race. And let's get started with a lap around the sprint car world and talk about that race. It was the 55th annual Tuscarora 50 at Port Royal Speedway, all part of the Juniata County Fair. Thursday night, Anthony Macri won. Friday night, Lance DeWeese won. But Saturday, Anthony Macri came back. Ashley, what a run, what a performance. This is an exclamation point race for Anthony Macri. That's his biggest win of his career, $60,000. Um, kudos to the Kleins for adding another $5,000 to the original $55,000 purse. Um, just incredible to see what Anthony did. Obviously, uh, the night before was not how he wanted to go, going through the B-Main, obviously. But uh, incredible race, um, a lot of drama along the way this weekend from whether it's guardrails or cutting tires, getting into people, wrecks, fires. Um, and I, I do want to give a quick shout out to Danny Dietrich and Logan Wagner. Um, kudos to them. I've watched several people on fire at Port Royal over my lifetime here. And it's always incredible to see the other racers jump out and try to help a guy out. No doubt about it. When Dylan Sisley flipped and caught on fire, it was Dietrich and Wagner to the rescue and the safety crews. All the safety crews did well, too. But those guys completely clad in fireproof stuff really make a difference. So you're right. Kudos to them. When Anthony Macri, we look at his season, 20th win of the year, biggest of his biggest win of his career, eighth All-Star win, eighth Port Royal win. It was Macri, it was Brent Marks, and it was Danny Dietrich. Sixty thousand dollars for Anthony Macri, so a huge win for him. Let's go from turn one to turn two. The other big event, the 66th running of the Gold Cup at Silver Dollar Speedway. Thursday night it was Kyle Larson. Friday night it was Carson Macedo, and Saturday night Ashley, it was all about Shark Racing. And it was Jacob Allen who came out on top, um, five one hundredths of a second over Logan. Um, it's pretty incredible. It's the $25,000 to win. It's the rebirth of Gold Cup. They brought back the bikini contest. <laughs> yeah. What Brandy, Kyle Larson, and Koei Copeland have done out there is absolutely incredible. Really, truly is. And for Jacob Allen, his fourth career win, his fifth, or fourth win of the season, his fifth career win, we are going to talk to Logan Schuhart uh, when we come back here in just a moment. Uh, he finished second in that race, but he is the teammate to Jacob Allen. What a big one, and I am telling you what, they have got things. I talked briefly with Kyle Larson on Sunday morning at the NASCAR Cup Series race in Kansas, and he's ecstatic with the way the fans, the crowd, and everyone reacted to the Gold Cup, and that is one that is going to be epic as we go forward. Just mention this, Logan Schuhart is going to join us, so we'll chat with him here in just a moment on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us uh, out from the great state of California is Logan Schuhart. Hello, Logan. How are you? What's going on, Steve? 
Good. How, how about yourself? We're doing well. We line these things up in advance, but we almost looked like we knew what we were doing this time. Uh, coming off that spectacular finish with you and Jacob coming across the line, you came down second on the uh, on on the Gold Cup. Your teammate Jacob won. Boy, what a what a thrilling night for shark racing. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, I was hanging out with Jake just a little bit ago, talking to him about it. But I felt like we were racing go karts as a kid, and uh, you know we used to have some pretty cool races at my grandfather's go kart track where Jake and I learned to race, and uh, that's kind of just what it felt like. <laughs> um, a lot more money on the line. Uh, one of you know California's most prestigious races, but for Jake and I to kind of go across the finish line, you know, side by side, uh, I, don't, I don't think either one of us really knew who won. Um, you know, you go go down the back stretch and you can look at the scoreboard, but all it has is two number ones on it, so you don't know who's who or what's going on. And uh, but I was, th- you know, my level of excitement, I don't think changed at all when uh, they, Mike Hess came here to the radio and said that, that Jake won. Uh, I was just so excited for the outcome or, and how close it was and uh, just how much fun it was. You know, I thought of my grandfather right away. and um, he, he didn't make it out the victory lane for first 10, 15 minutes, not because he couldn't get there. He's got a scooter, but because he's he's kind of tearing up the pit area. So he had to wait wait to get out there, but that that's pretty cool for, for Jake and I and um, you know, happy for Jake, happy for Hannah, and um, it's just a pretty neat thing for our family. Logan, you talk about your grandpa, obviously scruffy, uh, started shark racing a long time ago, but to see you guys traveling up and down the road, you know, we've watched you guys, we've grown with you guys the last six, seven years on the world of outlaw tour, and we've watched you guys scrape the bottom of the barrel to now one, two crossing the finish line. What has this journey been like for you and Jake? And now that shark racing is, is one of the contenders week in and week out. Uh, that's what we've always wanted to build it up to. That's my grandpa's vision. That was Jake and I's vision is to keep building it up and to make it bigger and better. That to where, you know, we weren't just saying we were out here to, to race, but that we could compete at the highest level and, and, and try to race for outlaw championships, which that's not, you know, happening this year where there's some things we need to work on but we're competitive and we can we can race up front and you know some of the biggest races and uh you know both having strong runs at Eldora and Knoxville and you know two PA boys you know winning the gold cup or in California you know, we won my fortune enough to win last year and then Jake won this weekend with us running second so um we, we're sharing that we can compete out here you know there's things that we need to work on as far as being consistent but we couldn't do that without you know all our sponsors all our partners uh you know michael newman works very hard at home uh ron helmick's been with me for a good many years now four or five years and uh todd burkheimer's work helping on my car tyler barber with jake uh lucky is came over from australia so a lot of great people sponsors driving cnd rigging Veramax. Uh, MGK spark plugs, you know, Pell's tire service on Jake's car. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be in this position. When we look at the dynamic of shark racing, I think it's fair to say that, especially with Jacob's lack of experience, at one time, you know, the 1S car was, generally speaking, better than the 1A car. You guys were a little bit, a couple of steps ahead of where Jacob is. I think now that he's caught you guys, what is the dynamic and, and, and how beneficial is it for the team to have two cars now that are competing at the top level of this sport? Oh, like I said, that's where we always visioned it. You know, my grandfather, you know, I always wanted to see Jake succeed and I knew he, I knew he could, you know, anything that we did as kids and as, you know, sports or did competitively, Jake was always good. Um, he's always athletic and, um, and I, so I, I knew, you know, in, in racing as a kid, you know, I watched Jake win races. So I knew he was capable of winning races. And um, we just had to get to that point of, you know, getting his confidence there and um, getting the cars right. You know, there's so much of going to these different racetracks is experience and having notes and knowing what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and, and Jake's been very, very good with that the last year and a half, I feel like, is uh, learning about his car and, and what he, what he, what feels good to him, and, and what could be better, and just what what always works on, you know, not what always works, but sometimes what works on my car doesn't work on his, and 
Uh, I've, I've tried his setups and I have people come up, you know, how comes Jake qualifies so good and, and you're kind of off the pace load? I'm like, man, I try to do Jake setups, you know, sometimes with qualifying, it just doesn't work, doesn't feel good. And I feel like that's the same way uh, with him. There's what's pretty cool is I'd be completely honest if people came up and asked me uh, how our cars were set up for the Gold Cup last weekend and, and Jake and I's cars were. I don't want to say completely different, but there's a lot of differences in how they are set up and they ran one, two. So it's uh, sometimes it's just what, what fits the driver and what, you know, what feels comfortable to them. And uh, fortunate enough that, you know, Jake and I are both able to run up front at times and, uh, and he's running well also. I love that you talk about, even though you're a team, how different the two of you are and what you like in your race car. Logan, that being said, uh, three wins so far this season, uh, you talk about being from Pennsylvania. Obviously, those West Coast California bull rings are a lot different than the racetracks here in central Pennsylvania. Over the years, what is it that you've learned? Is it talking to other drivers? Is it just seat time on those racetracks? Is it watching film? How have you learned to adapt to those racetracks? I'd say a little bit of all of the above. Um, it's, it's a little bit of everything. You're talking to different people, getting notes, going, you know, getting experience, going to them. Uh, over the years, uh, I uh, I sort of feel like I enjoy racing on the West Coast more than I do at home now, just because I struggle a little bit when I go home. But um, I feel like we'll be better when we get back there uh, here in a couple weeks. Uh, you know, we ran really well at the National Open last year. Uh, you know, I have an outlaw win at Port Royal. I love I love going to Port Royal with all the you know changes and uh, improvements that they've made to that racetrack. It's you know unbelievable, awesome facility. So I, I enjoy going back there, but really anywhere we go a lot of its notes you know a lot of it's reading the racetrack that night and seeing what your car likes or and, and we also make mistakes you know we've, we've been there so many times know know what works and what doesn't work and we still mess them up at times so um sometimes that's a bad thing pros and cons to being a driver crew chief or whatever you want to call jake and i but um Oh, we have a great group of guys that do a very good job. Like I, like I said earlier, my grandfather, you know, I can always talk to him. Um, and, but, you know, not lots of times talk to Jake. Like I said, we have differences in, in what we like in our cars, but I can always bounce ideas off of him. And, you know, I kind of know what he likes. He knows what I like. And, you know, we'll ask each other's opinion on, you know, what, what we think each other will like to try and help, help each other. So, um, I know that makes my grandfather happy, and we, we like seeing each other do good. So, uh, great team effort. Logan, I want to go off track. Uh, I was following along and poked around on your Instagram, and I saw the coolest video that you made as you guys were headed to Skagit. It was you and Summer and Bubba, of course. You can't have a video without Bubba in it. Um <laughs> It just looks like you guys travel in the country in your motor coach. It seems like that you guys have a pretty sweet setup there. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that look into it. Um, you know, I'm sure it's not all. I'm sure it's not all sunshine and roses, but uh, it's 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 got to be neat to travel the country and see the things that you get to see. Uh, a lot of pros around the world all tour. It's it's a lot of time away from home, but you get to see a lot of beautiful places, a lot of sights. Uh, meet a lot of different people that you only see a few times a year, but it feels like, you know, you get to hang out with them all the time when you do get to see them. So uh, very, in, very enjoyable in a lot of ways. And, and that trip that, that you're talking about from, from Fargo to Skagit is one of the most beautiful drives. Well, I feel like a lot of the teams say it is the most beautiful drive we run all year. Uh, and um, a lot of sites, a lot of beautiful country. And um, it's a long one, but very, very enjoyable. So you want to make you you just uh, crossing your fingers that the, that your rig makes it the whole way there, but uh, for us it did, and it was an enjoyable trip. Steve, you mentioned Bubba. I can't go without asking <laughs> Logan about Bubba every single time. Race fans, if you haven't met Bubba, get to the racetrack, go to the t-shirt trailer. Bubba is the biggest dang bulldog you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> it is so cool. He said he's got such an awesome personality. But y'all have actually. Uh, wrapped him up into your souvenirs and you actually give back through Bubba. Logan, will you talk about that? Sure. I wish uh, Summer was over here with me right now, but she started a, um, a page called Bubba's Helping Paul. And uh, actually, she's got another bulldog on there right now that she's donating a good bit of her proceeds to. Um, somebody tagged us and wanted us to adopt it, but Bubba doesn't get along with other dogs very well. So uh, we couldn't adopt them as much as we want to, but uh, we just have two of them right now. But 
she uh, she takes so Bubba's helping Paul. She makes koozies and um, some shirts and some decals and other stuff and donated donates it to different shelters. A few of them at home, but some out in the road and uh, you know buy some dogs beds or foods or food or whatever they need and uh, she does a great job with that. You have this great Instagram video. Um, are you are you aspiring to be the David Gravel of Instagram? Do you the, the social media aspect of this that uh, that video again? You guys did a really really nice job with it. Is is that something we can see more from or see more of as you guys travel around? I'll admit I'm not the best with it. I feel like I, I should be better with it with, uh, with with racing and you know building a brand and, and all that stuff. But I'm gonna try to do it a little bit more. Uh, Bill's. Bill and I have been messing around with the GoPro and on the race car mainly to get some notes and see what we can learn on the racetrack. Then uh, we've talked about trying to you know, make a little bit of a YouTube page and, and that kind of thing. So uh, Accept Media has helped us a little bit with some of that stuff, made some cool videos uh, and started a YouTube page with us. And uh, they do a great job, but I'm trying to learn a little bit more myself. And uh, it's definitely a neat thing to do in today's day and age. I feel like it's just it's something else that, that you got to do. And I feel like fans enjoy it. Um, you know, I hear a lot of fans talk about Gravel's page and, and they, they enjoy that. So um, and, and I've been asked by our fans to, to kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to try to get a little better at it and do some of that stuff. And um, it's a fun thing to do. So uh, I try to get better at it. But it's a lot to juggle, let's be honest. I know David has a, a guy who's actually helping him to, to produce and make things happen. So for you guys to do it on your own, it, it is a lot. What is a day, walk us through your day today, Logan. Like, what does today look like for you? Oh, uh, well, we just drove from, we kind of took today off, yesterday off in Chico. And uh, so just kind of hung out, hung out, watched some football. Uh, the guys drove here to Visalia, but today uh, we're working on the car. Um, pretty warm here today so we got the tent out uh washing them here at the hotel they're pretty neat letting us wash the cars here so gonna wash and, and do maintenance and just get ready for next weekend so that's uh that's a lot of what our trips are you know if we're not making videos driving across the country it's driving to the next racetrack working on them getting them ready and then you might have a day or two in between to, to do something else but uh that's a lot of what uh being on the road consists of Final question for you here, David, as we're down to, I think, a dozen races left to go. Ashley mentioned three wins. You won at Bristol, Jackson, Skagit. You also won the Cappy Classic in your prelim night at Knoxville. What types of things in these final dozen or so races are you working on? Obviously getting some wins, but to, 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 to better your program and to, and, and to even look forward to 2023. Yeah, it's always trying to learn. You know, it's winning these races is very hard. I feel like we've been in contention here you know, more the second half of the year than what we were at, at the beginning. Um, you know, we were in the championship hunt for the longest time up until I'd say around the Kings Royal time and we had some DNFs. So um, that's what we want to get rid of next year. You know, I feel like the consistency's there, uh, the speed's there. I feel like we uh, we can contend for a World of Outlaw Championship if we can keep our car on the racetrack and not have these mechanical failures. Um, but I, I do believe, you know, seems like we always get stronger at the end of the year for whatever reason. I don't, I don't totally understand it, but uh, we kind of did the same thing last year. We, we came on strong after Knoxville and uh, won some races. I believe we had three wins going into you know, Washington last year. So um, really came on strong here at the, at the end of the year. And, um, you know, I, I just, like you said, I like that we have the National Open coming up. So we got a, a big race there. Uh, Charlotte has been good to us in the past, so I always look forward to that. It's a bigger event. Um, you know, we're going back to Port Royal and, and, and some of these other big racetracks that um, you know are possible wins. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to trying to make the end of the year strong, finish strong, and um, build our. I am looking forward to the winter time uh, off season to try and regroup and uh, you know, try and build this team back up. You know, I feel like, like I said, we're fast, but. Uh, we have some stuff that we need to work on uh, for next year if we want to contend with the World Outlaws. Logan, we appreciate the time. We wish you continued success, and we'll talk to you down the road. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate there, it. The, have a good day. Thanks there for we go. Me. Logan Shuhart joining us on the Hercules Tire Hotline. Stay with us more in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers.
Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. So glad you've joined us. And Ashley uh, Logan Short joining us on the Hercules Tire Hotline. Man, I love chatting with that young man. He is good family, good racer, good person. He checks off all the boxes. It's been so fun to watch them and watch them grow, watch their team grow and hear the stories over the years. But I really enjoyed the fact that Logan shared that he wasn't sure which one was the winner <laughs> when he saw those ones on the scoreboard. But the fact that he was just as excited for Jacob as he would be himself to win just really tells you the type of person Logan is. And Logan, if you're watching this, more videos. I love the behind the scenes videos. I love what David Gravel does. Ashley, did you see his food around Skagit? Did you see any of his social media around Skagit? Well, you had your own food. You no, had your own I food. Just eat my own food here. Yeah, you had your own food. You were there. David Gravel should be 400 pounds. The way he ate up at Skagit, and, and, and the little scrawny guy, man, he hacks the rest of us off. I, I, I hate people who eat like David Gravel and look like David Gravel. There, I said it. Um, no, I love the social media. Drivers, I love the social media. Crew members, the behind the scenes look. We love what you do on the racetrack. But we love seeing that behind the scenes look as well. So keep it up. Keep them coming. That's for sure. All right. Before we had talked to Logan, we were doing a lap around the sprint car world. Let's go down the back straightaway into turn number three. And Cole Macedo, the youngster from California, he's in Ohio driving for Ray Brooks Racing. This is Mike and Stephanie Linder. Okay. He's spoiled rotten by those folks. Friday, he clinched the Attica Track Championship. Saturday, he clinched the Attica Fremont Championship Series. And Ashley, Man, I'll tell you what, Cole Macedo, not, not a last, that's a last name we're familiar with, but the first name is one we're going to keep an eye on as well. It is true, Steve. He's got nine wins in a 410 this year and two in a 360. Five of them came at Fremont, three at Attica, and one at Wayne County. We got a chance to sit down and talk with him at Knoxville, Steve. And he is, you know, yes, he is Carson's younger brother, but uh, he's coming into his own and rightfully so. Yeah, he really is. And for those not familiar with the story, the Linders, Mike and Stephanie Linder, they have over the last few years adopted a driver from California. And this driver becomes spoiled rotten. Okay, Buddy Kofoid knows what I'm talking about, becomes spoiled rotten, gets a good race car, and Cole Macedo taking advantage of that good race car and just absolutely having a stout season. And they still have some racing to go up there as well. I am sure Cole Macedo's probably not done winning this year. That's turn number three. Let's go to turn number four. IRA bumper to bumper sprints. What a sprint car championship battle they have coming down to the line. Jake Blackhurst, the defending champion, Jordan Goldsberry, Jake Newman, Danny Slaffer. They're all within about 100 points of each other. Ashley, this one is going to come down to the end with only three races remaining. And that's awesome. That's what these points battles are all about. Black, Kirsten, Schaefer both have three wins. Goldsberry has two. Newman, he has yet to find victory lane. However, he's consistent, and that's important, and it shows that he's in the points championship battle. Like you said, there's three races that remain this weekend at Beaver Dam. Next weekend, Friday, they're at Dodge County Fairgrounds, and then Saturday, Plymouth Dirt Track in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Steve. See, you like to say Sheboygan too, don't you? We all like to say Sheboygan. It's fun to say. It really is. Fun to say, that's for sure. That's all part of the Wisconsin Sprint Car Championship. That big night at Sheboygan next Saturday night. IRA bumper-to-bumper -bumper sprints, 360 sprints, non-wing sprint cars, lightning sprints. Racing in Wisconsin is so good, whether it's sprint cars or super late model racing. Lots and lots of good stuff up there in Wisconsin, that is for sure. Ashley, what a joy. Good chance to catch up with Logan Shuart. Always good to talk sprint car racing. And uh, let that post-Juniati County Fair dieting program begin for everybody up there, right? <laughs> it's true, unfortunately. You know, I'm going to miss my funnel cakes, my caramel apples, and, of course, the Lutheran Church stand. <laughs> oh, the Lutheran Church stand. Man, oh, man, what a treat it is, that's for sure. All part of fall in Pennsylvania and a lot of great sprint car racing. That is for sure. Again, we really, truly appreciate Logan Schuhart joining us. But more important than all of that, we thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.